everybody's stick is completely different. That's what's special about geography. We've all walked around the same place, but everybody had a different experience. Everyone's stick is that magic word, unique. Ed Walton Primary School in Nottinghamshire is in the unusual position of having its own farm and three acre wood. Geography coordinator and year 3-4 teacher Jane Whittle is fanatical about geography. Children really aren't sure what geography is and I think it gets muddled up with history, RE and the umbrella word topic. And I know there are a few adults that will come in and say, oh well, what is geography? So I really try and feed into the children's mind that geography, it's an actual word, it's a subject, it's got so many different skills and you can do this with those skills. You can do more and then you can edit out. Today, Jane has planned a day-long map-making activity for her year three and four class. The objective is to produce a map of the school's wood. The children will start by walking through the wood, collecting things, which they will fix to a journey stick. Rowan class. Geographers, as soon as this gate opens, your journey begins. Now I can already see a feather. Now let me get you a wax crayon. Now look up, loads of interesting patterns and there must be. So I think the journey sticks really focus children's mind on not, oh, we're just going for a walk. They've actually got a purpose to their walk. They know they've got to find interesting objects. They've got to pick up as many different things as they can. Okay. Yes, she has got a skeleton. Okay. Alfie! Is... Children's knowledge of maps can be quite different from year to year, depending on whether their parents take them out about in in the car or whether they do a lot of exploring on holidays. They always use a map when they go to France and go to different countries. On a map you can find um, places like campsites and rivers and lakes. And different colour roads and on the side there's a key to show you what, what the colours mean. I, I think a map is a bird's eye view like it's looking down so you can't see really lots of detail like birds and cars. Oh, hang on, we'll have a think about this one. Yeah. People, you're being called to photograph a nest. The digital sticks came about from in my first time of doing journey sticks. I had a boy with a broken arm, so he took photos. And I thought, well, that was quite a unique way of then saying to children, well, actually, in the real world, they don't always handwrite maps very rarely. So it's a good way of teaching children that technology is actually part of geography. I can see lots of leaves with the sun shining on them. So it, like, makes lots of multicoloured leaves. And that was also a really good way of introducing a bleak view, bird's eye view. And I tried to encourage them to lie down just so they could try and see around a place rather than just one level looking down. At the end, you might want to do a tree to remind you of the feather. Here we are, Laura. Now, that's lots of memories from classroom one, which will remind you when you come to your map, won't it? So I think we're ready to move on because we've nearly finished up half past six. Because it's quite an open-ended task of you have your own response, that in itself doesn't put any boundaries on children with low ability. But I would always take parents or a teaching assistant around so that you've got someone to check that they're not picking up anything that they shouldn't be and to talk the children through what they're mentally thinking and give them a chance to verbalise their ideas before they make any marks on a page. Remember the countryside code. Jessica, protect people as well. You're wafting that stick around. Ooh. I like to do a big conversation at the beginning about the countryside code and picking things up. And I think most of the time children, they're, they're aware of health and safety. They don't want to hurt themselves. Okay. Well, what I would suggest is that we take this back because we shouldn't find litter in the woods and I'll rip off the ring pull for you. Then that can remind you. 
So if we leave that there, will you remind me to pick it up on our way back? Where's the pin? I've done it with four children to one adult before, and that really set my mind at ease because I knew they were being watched, especially if you go somewhere public that's open. But I do appreciate that it is a, quite a risk to actually get going, but I think once you've tried a journey stick for yourself and gone through the mental process of should I pick it up, shouldn't I, then you can talk to the children a lot easier about it. Then I got a leaf and some moss and a bottle top and... Um, a shell and leaf are bringing in the spot leaf. Even something that might not be interesting to us or another child is really interesting and really special to someone else. Now, I'm not really sure how you're going to get all of that on your stick, but I guess we could pin it so it goes there. I think that makes the whole experience meaningful for the children as well, to see that they can find something valuable that someone else might not even consider picking up, and that throws up a whole discussion about children's attitudes towards a place. You could see something that triggers your memory about something that you were feeling at the time. It's just a personal response to a place through different artefacts. Try and pop it underneath, try and do a crush. Pop it underneath, pop it underneath. Let's just squidge it a bit, won't we? Put that on there. That might just hold it. There, OK? Now, Harry, are you ready, Lily? Manjeet, where did our journey start? When we got in the woods. We are now going to walk, Luke, all the way back to the start of our journey. So this is the last chance, Alfie, to pick up things for your journey stick. The very last part of our journey. OK, let's go. And then they've got that permanent fixture in front of them when they then come on to make a map. So it's very visual and very tactile for all different learners. Got a feather. Um, I've made a tree rubbing. Uh, the one in me. A leaf. I've got a different Feather, got a litter, like a green. So we are going to do a draft, a practice map, and it's called a linear map. Could you try and copy that word? It's a bit tricky. Linear map. And what I would like you to do is try to copy your stick. And just to remind me, I'm going to put the start line here. Now, what I then do, Ranjit is copy all the things I found onto the map. So this is a practice for later on. So let me do Jessica's really interesting leaf here. That's it. And then what did we find? A feather, didn't we? Another feather. Make sure you use your journey stick carefully. At the moment though, Harry, that's not a map, is it? It's not a finished map. It's a linear map of our journey, but it's only stage one. What do real maps have to have? Where you went. Um... Where you went. So a route. Do you know that word beginning with route? Who can finish it off? Route. No, what do they use on maps instead of doing a proper drawing rather than doing lots and lots of trees? you might choose a symbol. So your map needs to have, Harry, a title that says Meadow Covered Wood. OK, you're going to put the items that you found. So just like your linear map, the routes that you took, the symbols that you, you're going to use. So you might have a symbol for tree, you might have a symbol for feathers, or you might just draw your feathers, a key, how you were feeling and a title. Look at your journey stick and pretend that that, Alfie, is bending and curving into the route we took. We're not imagining our map, we're using our evidence. But watch out, Niall, because if you forget to show symbols or you forget to do the title, your target buddy will notice. Straight line. There. 
east is that way, uh, west is that way, and go south. A shortcut through the wood. So you can decide whether you have the gate here. While their classmates are drawing their maps, the children doing digital sticks are uploading their photos and creating maps on the computer. It's a lot more thicker out of the night outline. So you know. Edit some do. Okay, fill it with brown. Because I could draw the. People. That's a good idea, Shanice. And you'll have to remember to put that in your key, won't you? You have to put that in your key. Now we need to draw this here. As the children complete their maps, Jane introduces the final activity of the afternoon. They must assess each other's work against the criteria they decided as a group. They do this in pairs with their target buddies. Geography is your own feelings, your own journey. So everybody's map is all perfect. There was no right answer and everyone has tried really, really hard. But the thing that I did want you to do was include these features that we came up with before we started our map making. If you think that your target buddy has done their items really clearly, then you would put a big smiley face. I've got to listen to my target buddy telling me all about their maps. So I should hear some geography vocabulary. I might hear the word key, place, accurate, root, symbol. How many will I hear? Now, could you walk around Hannah's map? Has it shown a route? Yes. Yes. A clear route? Yes. Has Hannah done any symbols? Any little pictures? She has, hasn't they? That, she, that was a very good choice, Hannah. Now, has she done a title? Yes. And she's underlined it, so that's really clear as well. Oh, Hannah, loads of smiley faces from Shanice here. For some children it's a breath of fresh air and it's a relief and it's also fun for the teacher as well to be doing something different and being able to wander around completely can turn some children on to learning that normally would be frightened to have to write or open a textbook and I think it gives such a different unique dimension to learning and helps children sometimes to realise that even their walk to school they're actually learning something on the way. The success of the journey sticks has inspired Jane to try them out in subject areas other than geography. We've taken that a stage further with literacy, where you just take a story and looked at um, where the character would have gone and what they might have put on their journey stick on the way. So then we're moving into imaginary journey sticks. But I think taking it into the imaginary dimension is quite another way of doing it again, but with a different focus.